<laughs> Welcome to my Rivian commercial van review, in which Alyssa is still trying to figure out my enthusiasm for vans. The audio kind of sucks in the first bit of this video, but bear with me, we're really going to learn a lot about this thing. Rivian commercial van, full send to the corner. Oh, it's beeping at me, it says slow down while turning. Where's the racing spirit? This is an LFP battery pack because we still have no indicated power limit. Still just doesn't care, ready to give us full power, even down this low. Such a good view. We're drag racing this truck on the floor. Oh, we're taking him! We're taking him! <laughs> I just saw his rev counter in the red. He was wide open because that thing shifted that red line. EDV lifestyle. Wow, we're driving a Rivian EDV or RSV or commercial van. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> this is incredible. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to Normal Illinois and welcome to the Rivian commercial van. I'm so excited that we have the opportunity to test out what's really called the RCV, but we've also heard it called the EDV, that's the electric delivery version. We've heard it called the RSV, which is this one, the Rivian service van, and they even just sell the base chassis. I don't know what that one's called. But uh, in this video, this is my first time really getting up close with this van, and a huge thanks to RJ, the CEO of Rivian. I was talking to RJ earlier today at this little Rivian event, and he's like, have you ever driven one of the vans? Do you want to make a video? And he's like, oh, well, there's one over here. After the event, just take it, bring it back tomorrow. So, of course, we're going to do as much as we can in one night. I'm going to take you on a full tour. We're going to play around with the software. We're going to drive it in the city on the highway. We're going to drag race some people. We're going to see if it does a burnout. Of course, we're going to charge it and look at efficiency and really just try to demystify everything about this van. It is one of the happiest vehicles on sale. It's been so cool seeing them in my neighborhood and others, and now we have the chance to really play with, play around with it here on Out of Spec. So huge thanks to Rivian, huge thanks to RJ for letting us really make the first videos with this one. Let's get into it, a night with the Rivian commercial van. Can't wait. <laughs> Well, we start with a tour. This all came up very last minute, the opportunity to make a video with the Rivian commercial van. And it all happened because I drove out here a thousand miles, really fun trip, uh, just to film R2. I wanted to see that vehicle. Jordan went to the Laguna Beach unveil, so we had something on out of spec, but I had a couple days actually, very rarely, and I thought, let's make a road trip out of it and we'll film a motoring video for you guys and all that stuff. And then while I was at R2, R3 and R3X were also there, so I got to check those out. Hopefully you've seen those in a previous video. And now I get a day with the commercial van. Uh, on the tour, what should you know? And I have a spec list because again, I wasn't super prepared for this, so you'll have to forgive me for referencing some notes. You also have to forgive the very poor audio in this video, which I just, we're going to try and make it better, but I had to go to Walmart and get the crappiest mic because it's so windy out here. And of course I left my mics at home, but it's all part of the fun, right? We're playing around with the freaking Rivian van. It's so sick. So we have such a fun, happy looking vehicle. It's like someone took a Honda E and just blew it up. It, and that was one of my favorite vehicles as well. Has this very almost, I don't know, animal-like personality up front with these bright running lights up here. This front uh, clip does not come off. This is all one piece, so there's no front trunk or anything like that. But let's just start with the tour up here. Come on, Alyssa. We have a texturized bumper right here, which I've never seen really in any other vehicle, this sort of texture. You have uh, a camera here with potentially even a front camera washer. Very nice Rivian printed into this black plastic piece right here. And then you have a washer filler. So this is where you fill up with washer fluid. And I think it pops open, which way? How do we pop this thing open? I feel like this is the clip. Yeah, there we go. So you fill it up with washer fluid right there. I did not know that. Two wipers, no cyber truck mono wiper crazy thing here, but these open up very van like this way. We have a front camera here, a blank camera here. If you come on in and look closely, it seems like there's nothing on the inside of this one another camera here, and then probably a light and rain sensor in this one. Interestingly, all of the sensor suite is down low, close to the wipers, so that when you do wipe, these didn't have to be crazy long and wipe something all the way at the top of the windshield. You'll also see some marker lights up there, which are amber, required for large vehicles. 
and also two more cameras, both with washers on the roof. So that's pretty interesting. I'm guessing those little nubs below the cameras are washers. And Rivian was telling me a lot of their service van uh, adaptations came from, of course, the electric delivery vehicle, which was made in collaboration with Amazon and really had you know very bespoke options. So um, I guess their commercial van, the, the public one that you know AT&T is buying, DHL is buying, a few others are buying, those may have different adaptations than this, but every service van is upfitted this way and pretty much identical. Ultimately, yeah, it's a van. You can customize them. It's designed to be made in any way that you need. And uh, yeah, so cool. We're playing. So cool. We're playing around with this. This is the LFP front-wheel drive configuration, and this is also the 500 version. There's a 700 long boy that you can get. I think just another one of these panels. I'm not sure, but it's a long version of this. And so this is the short, the sporty shorty. We're gonna call it. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a good name, Melissa? Probably not. But we're calling it the Sporty Shorty, the 500. And so that means it's the pure racing specification. We have a roughly 100 kilowatt hour LFP battery pack. Although when I scrolled through all the EPA documents, it looks like you can get, I can't remember if it was 90 kilowatt hours or 96 kilowatt hours out of it. But either way, I don't think they let you use all 100 kilowatt hours of the gross battery. But in the official Rivian communication, it says 100 kilowatt hour pack LFP. They also say up to 50 kilowatt max charging, but then can be expanded up to 100 kilowatt max charging. We're gonna play around with that. Of course, I'm gonna run it low, plug it into a DC charger. We're gonna see what happens. I don't know if that is a user or a selectable option where you have to pay for higher charging power or why they would give you a 50 kilowatt and then 100. I'm hoping this one has the fast charging. Uh, a couple things on pricing I just wanna mention. You can actually go to the Rivian Fleet website and it will give you base prices. And so this is the fleet version and it's just for the delivery one. So the delivery 500 and the delivery 700. And it might be different, obviously, this is probably more expensive with all the kit in here, but the 500 starts at $83,000. And the 700 starts at $87,000. Seems very expensive. They say up to $7,500 in tax credits. Uh, may apply. I actually think in certain states you might even get more, especially California with commercial vehicles. There's a lot more um, incentives on the table uh, in certain states. So there's a fleet sales if you're interested in buying one. Uh, I'll show you that process actually. Let's say we wanted to do this one. We're going to click on delivery 500. Hopefully this pulls up. We're going to select that quantity. How many do we want? 150,000 of them. Put in your contact details, company info, are you working with a fleet management company? Are you interested in digital integrations? This is interesting. And I think we also offer digital solutions for fleets, including real-time telematics data and remote vehicle commands, driver and vehicle insights, alerts, analytics, and more. And if you order enough of them, like Amazon did, they'll even put custom software in the screen with your own built-in stuff. So I just love how customizable and adaptable this is truly for a fleet looking to go electric. And hopefully a fleet ends up purchasing these off of this video because I can tell you in my very short time with it, I am just thrilled. I'm so enthused. I have some van experience and actually some electric van experience that we've done on this channel. I of course own a Mercedes Sprinter that we've converted for RV life. How sick would this be if this was an electric RV? Comment down below if you want a Rivian RV version of this thing that you can sleep out of, camp out of, cook out of, take a shower and it'd be so cool. Uh, I would love that. But ultimately, they're starting with fleets. This is where they really need the volume on these things. Uh, and we've driven the Bright Drop on this channel. So we've driven E-Transit, Bright Drop, and now the Rivian EDV. For, you know, I might be missing a few other vans that we've done, but we have some van experience. So I'm very much looking forward to making some assumptions and comparisons as we go through this video. Um, so we looked at the front. We also have physical parking sensors around the vehicle as well these vertical mirrors that are quite slim. Also, if you come around here, Alyssa, I can show you, yes, a dog. <laughs> that does not come with the van. Good boy. He's been a good boy. And then we have here another camera with, I'm guessing, a washer. I really wanna see if I can activate all those washers. So we're gonna play around with that. Uh, we're gonna get into all the closures, door openings, and all that stuff. We also have some side sensors here, potentially for more collision avoidance, which is really great. You can see here, powered by Rivian, the whole van is Rivian. 
but that is uh, on every version of these. And I think Rivian will even sell you the base platform and then go, I think Canada Post or USPS is doing that. And they've just made the ugliest bodies around back. This is where it gets pretty windy. So forgive me if the audio goes crazy, but you can see here Rivian mobile service. We have a light under here with two more cameras up there. And uh, that sort of lights up this whole area, which is great. And these big chunky grab handles, super cool. Now I have the key on me right here. It's very different than the normal key. And this actually works differently than the Rivian R1 key does. Uh, some of you may not know, I own a Rivian R1 too, so I'm pretty familiar with the truck and SUV. Um, this key only unlocks the doors that you are right next to. So if I walk back here, it will unlock this door and you can't get in the side on either side. If I walk to the driver's side, this door is locked. So I think it's really cool how this is proximity based to the door that you're opening. Now back here by the taillight housing, there's a little black button of some kind. And I, it, I guess the whole thing is one button. So that undoes the latch and then I can push the door open and we are greeted by Blue. Hey, Blue, what do you think, buddy? Anyway, Blue, why don't you come on in here? Let's play around with this. You can stand if you're up to six foot, 10 inches tall in here, which is cool. We'll go through an in-depth tour and everything and I'll walk you through the weights, the requirements. I have all of the specifications and you have a complete pass through all the way to the front with an automatic door. So since blue's up here, I'm just gonna hit this button, Alyssa. Why don't you stand on the back side of the door or you're going with blue. See you guys, woohoo! And then I can click it again and it automatically opens. And what's cool is when I lock the van, see ya. And when I unlock the van, oh, that doesn't do it. <laughs> I gotta hit the button on the screen. But when I go into park or into drive, this door automatically moves, such a cool feature. One thing I noticed when I was in the bright drop was how loud this door was to go from back to front. Well, now there is like a little latch. Yeah, so you gotta pull this one back and then this slides in there. But this door was kind of loud and not and kind of crazy. Bright drop felt bigger on the inside though. This feels taller and narrower. That felt wider and shorter. Maybe it's my perception. I'm not sure of the numbers. Of course, they're all online out there. We're just doing a single vehicle review here, but that's my impression. We'll do some more videos on this thing. I wanna go through some of the specifications. So I'm just gonna join you back here if you don't mind. Rivian has kindly uh, provided me with the RCV, which is what their official name is, the Rivian Commercial Van 2024 Fleet Customers Quick Reference Guide. So you ready for the for a numbers game, Alyssa? Yep. All right, let's do this thing. I'm gonna show everyone around with this here. Length, 248.5 inches on the RDV or RCV 500, 278 inches. So 30 inches longer if you go for the 700 versus the 500. Your mirror's uh, width, it actually is wider on the 700. Wow, didn't expect that. So significantly wider. So um, with mirrors, it's 96.4 inches on the 500 and 103.5 on the 700. So I, I don't know if that goes to interior as well, but interesting. You're also a 0.1 of an inch taller on the 700. Your wheelbase goes from 157.5 inches to 187.5 inches, pretty crazy. We have a tire size of 245.70 R17 all around, so 17s on this thing. Ground clearance, you get more ground clearance with the taller one, maybe for a little bit better breakover angle or maybe even higher weight carrying. We'll get to that in a second. You have front and rear overhangs of 39.7 inches and 51.3 in the rear. Cargo area volume, this is the big one, 487 cubic feet in this one and 652 cubic feet in the 700. So that must be where the 500 and 700 come from. Cargo area width, it is wider in the 700 as well. Didn't expect that. Another seven inches wider wall to wall cargo area in the EDV 700. And wow, very cool. So again, I'll leave this document linked. Hopefully they'll let me do that so you can see everything. But I did, this is great information that the RDV 700 is wider. Now, will they make an RDV 900? I hope one day they just do big ass van, but definitely not here. There's some more things here as well, which is like curbside step is 15 inches off the ground. Rear bumper step is 18 inches off the ground. Cargo floor is 28 inches off the ground. All pretty cool. This is a big one, curb weight. 6,616 pounds in this particular one, and 6,986 pounds in the 700. 
The GVWR is 9350 versus 9500. Interesting. So they have a higher GVWR in the 700 as well, um, and but less carrying capacity because it weighs a bit more. So pretty interesting how this is all working out. You can put 2734 pounds of payload in this one and 2500 pounds of payload in the 700. That's okay, I think, for most applications for this fan. You're just not putting anything super heavy in this vehicle, but still 2,500 pounds roughly worth of payload is gonna be more than enough for most people. Um, Power-wise, it's got 320 horsepower, dang. Single motor front wheel drive, 235 kilowatts front motor, 300 pound-feet of torque. The ideal operating temperature is from plus 14 to plus 109 Fahrenheit. There's the Celsius conversions. But the extended operating temperature is negative 31 to plus 122. So, I mean, ultimately, this thing's designed to work in any environment. But I guess ideal operating range would be to get the range that you're looking for to optimize the system, things like that. Uh, so this has a much smaller turning circle, curb to curb, than the uh, 700 and ramp angles. Big one on the range. The range estimates for this vehicle are done in the EPA cycle, and you will always exceed that in the city. This thing in the city is going to be amazing, and maybe we can even do a little simulation when we get it in Colorado. Hopefully, we'll have it for some time to do a city range test, because my guess is you'll be able to do 200 miles in this in the city, especially if you're just inching along. Maybe more. I'm not sure. Uh, but the combined rating from EPA is 161 miles on this one, the 500, and 153 miles on the 700. So you're not really giving up any usable range by going to the 700, uh, which is pretty cool. What else should I mention? It's got 4G cellular, blah, blah, blah. Same screens out of the R1, which is like 15-inch center display, 12-inch driver display. Has an 11-kilowatt onboard charger, 48 amp, and 50 kilowatts of DC charging rate, but then capable up to 100. So maybe it's 50 all the way to full and then 100 peak. We're gonna definitely play around with it today and see what this thing can do. So that's just numbers and specs right off the bat. Are we bored of that yet, Alyssa? Yes, okay, let's go outside. Let me show you guys. One of the most important things about a van, to be serious, because I wanna be silly and drag race it and do stuff, but it's truly how do you get in and out of it? How do you you know use this on a daily basis? And I have to let you know upfront, I am not a delivery driver. I am not a service technician. I can only imagine what that job would be, but I at least wanna give you an impression of what it might be like to use this on a daily basis. So here I have the key. There's a unlock and lock, but again, everything is also proximity based. So I'm gonna basically just put this in my pocket and forget about it. This is the main door that I think drivers will use 99% of the time. One really nice thing is the door locks into place here. So if you're just inching around the neighborhood, and by the way, this folds up as well. If you're just inching around the neighborhood, package, 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 delivery, 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 whatever it is, service call, you can just get right in the vehicle. There's a grab handle right here on the right. So this step, not very high off the ground, perfectly spaced, right here on the handle and boom i'm in here there's also another handle right here if you don't want to grab so high if you can see this Alyssa, this uh black handle great you can just come grab and you're in really nice solution i would say once you're inside i can close this door and it closes nicely of course which is good this window does not roll down and it is very thin and kind of plasticky i mean i guess it is glass but um, I wish that window rolled down, but I think a lot of drivers are just going to leave this door open on nice weather days and let it rock and roll, which is, I think, going to be perfect. Okay, so let's say I walk away now. I can click lock. I can, oh, that was unlock. I can click lock on the key, and you can see that door closes and locks. So Alyssa, try and get in the back there. See if you can open it up now that I've walked away, because I'm pretty sure this is going to... So you can see there's someone trying to steal my packages out of the back of this van, even though I've left the door open, but that middle door locks itself, which is cool. Now this door, oh, interesting. You see it just unlocked as I walked up to it? Yeah, the door just opened up. So there is some door logic here that makes it pretty nice, and I'm sure a lot of this is customizable, of course, with each order. Once I open the door and I go inside, the driver's seat is right here. And you'll notice there's no armrest or anything in my way on this side. I can just boom, get right in the seat, <laughs> just roll up this window for wind. I can get right in the seat and I have all the room in the world. I can just go buckle up, which the seatbelt is conveniently right where I need it to be. I can come in, 
buckle, foot on the brake, that starts it. No start button, no starter, constantly going with a combustion engine, right in the drive, that door closes, and then we're good to go. And it's letting me know that I've left the rear door open. As soon as I put it into park, this door opens back up. So it's just a really nice thing. I also have a door on this side, and there's a little button right here to unlock it and pop it open. And this is really meant to be like a, it's very windy out there. This is really meant to be like a just once a day kind of door. When you lock up, when you're done for the day, you'll use this one. But primarily crawling in and out of the van, you're gonna basically come out this way with one motion. I can either go back or I can come out the side here. Plenty of room to breathe. I can stand up easily in here as well, which is great. And uh, yeah, it's just, just an amazing, cabin experience in here. The view out the front, by the way, if you can come up this way, is insane. I'll grab the camera here because look at how wide this is. You can see absolutely everything. This is like the driver's height and you just have glass for days. It's very cool. You can see I have little storage cubbies, little places to grab things, electric window switch, door pockets down here, cup holders on this side, I believe a driver monitoring camera. I have wireless charging pad one, wireless charging pad two, which is a dog treat holder, a little storage cubby down there as well. I wish this was a storage cubby as well, but it's not, it's just an open space. But thankfully behind the seat, there's a little space to put your backpack and everything like that. Over here, we have our breaker switches. These are very Euro style breakers. And I think this is specific for the service van. And I'm trying to think how many, it doesn't show me how many amps we're doing on them, but 40 amp right there. So the inverter in this thing must be pretty juicy to have 40 amps of AC. And you can see the service van is kitted out with a, I believe 120 volt, 30 amp plug right there, a tire changing machine right here, along with this, which is great. You have some compressed air that can run and power other tools. You have shelving, you have slide in tool chests that all go in here and everything is the same from van to van. So if you're a tech and you take van A on one day and van B on the next, all of your stuff, everything is the same across the company and that will really help with efficiency. There's also a fan in here and there's a fan you turn it on from the um, control screen over there. I think actually, Alyssa, it's right there, a cargo fan button. Yep, so there we go, auto. Click it one more time, let's kick that thing on. I wanna feel it, there it goes. Whoa, it's loud. <laughs> Sounds like a bunch of little laptop fans just spin into the moon in there. And you'll see everything in here is totally customizable. You have your rail system for the back door. You have a bunch of different shelving options here. You really can do whatever you want in this space. And I think, you know, while the 500 is perfect for the service van, it's still pretty big in here, Alyssa. The 700 would be the one you want for the conversion to elect to an electric RV. Okay, well, I'm going to hand this back to you here. So, yep, there we go. <laughs> Come on out with me this way, because I think this is another uh, important area of getting in and out. Looks like we have a little release for the back door right here. Yep, so that releases the latches on this side. And of course, I can close the door from in here. There's also a strap from the outside because this gets a little bit too tall. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, the way they have their service fans kitted out, by the way, and this is totally customizable. They just have wall outlets everywhere throughout the vehicle. And you can see even here, they have their machines plugged in. Just great to see all of this. And what is in here? Ah, NEMA 1450. We should charge something on that. So really cool that they've got, you know, that's interesting because there's a 48, 40 amp main breaker, but this is a 50 amp receptacle. So I wonder how that all works. I asked the Rivian guys, they weren't really sure of the inverter situation, if it's just R1 stacked up. But again, all of this can be bespoke for whatever you need and you can really pull power uh, out of the vehicle. And I love that they let you use the energy on board the van, part of that LFP battery, to power other devices, even up to juicy power, which is great. So popping out of the van, you can see I have this black um, handle here on this side. So I'm going to hold that and I'm just going to pop out really nice. This is a little bit tall of a step, totally manageable. Again, I'm six foot one. You can see how tall this van is, of course. This is totally manageable, but it would be nice, I think, if it was a little bit lower, but then you would lose your departure angle and you might scrape the bumper on things. 
To close the rear hatch, all I'm gonna do is grab this strap, pull down the door, and that's it, we're locked in. To release it, I can click this button, boom, I just heard the latch go, slide it up, and we're in and out. And this door will just go up and down all day long, up and down and up and down. I love the lighting signature on the back, Alyssa, it goes all the way up over the roof of the vehicle. You can always spot these a mile away on the highway because of the front lights looking great from behind and this massive rear tail light. I also have to commend the designers at Rivian for their, I would say, amazing artwork on the, uh, on the side of these things, using a blank canvas to, I would say, improve the streets and actually bring some fun and excitement to the roads. So that's kind of it for the tour. We should go drive it for the first time. I want to bring you with me for my very first drive. I'm going to walk you through the software menus as well. We're going to get into, actually, let's do that first. Let's do software. We'll go into the service menus. I'll show you everything in here. We'll then drive it for the first time on the city streets. You'll get my very first impressions. We'll take it on the highway. We'll drive it around and then we'll charge it. And maybe you can tell it's really windy, not perfect conditions. We'll get a rough idea of real world range. So the Rivian EDV. Blue, we're gonna load up and head out. See you, dude. Bye. Now, let's just do the process of a delivery driver. I've closed that. I'm walking around to this door. It should be open. Boom, here we go. Doors open. Grab the handles and see you later. Guys, you joined me in the EDV and I thought I'd give you just a little quick software tour because that's the one thing I've always been so curious about is this software system, what does the EDV have that the other one doesn't? I'm noticing it has the same switch gear. It has the SOS button with a little false positive little switch there. We have our headlight controls, wipers, and then I'm not really sure what's going on over here. Really cool things, cup holders, driver monitoring system as well. Hey, Alyssa, are you ready to deliver some packages? Yeah, where, where, where are we delivering? I don't really know, but I just wanted to walk everyone through. First of all, we have one, two, three, four, five options on the bottom. This one I think is when you have the Amazon app load it in it like does something with cameras and your built-in like amazon delivery app okay yeah. could be wrong but either way this Likely. this Likely. does pull up overview kind of a blurry rear view camera maybe it's just dirty um and then you have music so you only have fm or your phone bluetooth so no spotify built in yeah maybe. which isn't needed yeah i mean i think it's needed well, I mean, if, if this is supposed to be a delivery truck, people, new people are in this every single day. Yeah, so. good point, good point. So we also have lock and unlock right up here. There's a little notification bell, which, okay, probably is just not hooked up to the service yet. Some things up here as well. You can pull up your Bluetooth audio by swiping to the right. We also have our phone calls, so you get a hands-free phone. And then you get really the main control stack of the vehicle, which you have your dome lights on and off, which is this up here. Are those USB-C ports? No, they're little accent lights, I think. No. Yeah, I think those are accent lights as I'm turning it on and off. You also have a task light in the back, I'm not sure. There's a cargo fan, bulkhead door. Oh, no, no, don't do that, people are in there. No, I think it's this door. Bulkhead door just says closed. I think it's all. Yeah, maybe it's locked, okay. Cargo fan, auto uh on great side mirrors off whoa fans are ripping in there you hear that <laughs> side mirrors oh this is how you adjust it okay it's a little bit slower than our truck don't you think yeah i wonder if it's just because it's software limited because it's just a show vehicle right now there yeah. are some supports here yeah some usb a and c there of course we have cargo light brightness um, and then one thing I think is cool, you have normal hazard lights that pop up like this. I'm not sure why this is dark. I'm guessing it's because I switched from night mode, which looks normal, to day mode. And that bit, yeah, so... It shows that that's where the truck is. Yeah, maybe this is what shows up when you're driving. I don't know, that's kind of weird. So you have normal hazards, and then you have emergency hazards that wah, 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 go crazy uh, if there's really a, a thing. I think this is a great feature, this emergency hazard. So you have, you're like, I'm delivering a package and then you have like, a, I actually have an emergency button, which is cool. 59 miles on the odometer on this one. Again, this is where you hook up Bluetooth, connect to Wi-Fi, some display brightnesses. My opinion of this screen is maybe not as bright as I was expecting. 
No, it's not. But you also have sunglasses on, which might be. <laughs> no, they're, they're good. Uh, interestingly, there's no way to set a charge limit in this vehicle, and that's because this one has, and I think all production for about the last year, has an LFP battery pack that just can be charged to 100% with no issues. And you can see at 82%, it's predicting 105 miles of range. We really need to get one in for a city range test sometime. Uh, so that could be kind of interesting. Inside the system, you have you know, just your typical stuff, PSI. Uh, Rivian only had it set to 82%. I showed it where it shows the miles. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, just because that's kind of fun. Vehicle shipping code required. I wonder if it's the same. Nope, it's not the same code as like uh, whatever mode is in the other vehicles, but now I think I bricked it. No, we're good. No. You bricked it. Oh no, I bricked it. Will it time out? No way. Okay, and then you got how to set up your Amazon app in here and a few other things. Nice little storage around as well. Pedal box is totally different than R1 line. You can see here, throttle pedal, pretty long brake pedal, feels good. It's just present a key to start your vehicle and even has a little cutout of the EDV in there, which is great. If I come over here, now we have safety, which is auto high beams, park brake release and vehicle alarm. And then this pulls up ride. Whoa. Wipers. And now we're in on the service menus. How about this? Close the doors. Don't let any of the Rivian people see what we're up to at the moment. <laughs> Loading ECU infos. So you just tap the bar five times up top. And then we get propulsion. BMS. So this is all the same as the normal one. State of health, 100%. Look at all this right here, 419 volts at 85%. Isolation, all this is great stuff. 48 amp onboard charger. Wow, cool thermal stuff. Awesome to see all of this. Yeah, tools, doesn't matter. And then we can exit by just clicking out of it and then we're gone. So we got service mode in the EDV. <laughs> so yeah, all you do is you just tap this bar a bunch and then you get it. And then it's the same code as the other vehicles. So that's sick. We learned quite a bit. Climate controls right here. You have auto, um, which auto, interesting. It doesn't give you a temperature, Alyssa. It's just auto, how hot do you want? And auto, how cold do you want? This is very interesting. And then auto, how much fan you want? custom still doesn't let you choose a temperature heated steering wheel very nice let's just turn the wipers from a sprinkle to off we also have our parking light adjustments around here i think maybe anyway um yeah very cool we'll go back to auto and we'll actually even just shut it off there's no need to run climate control at the moment but that's the edv software that's cool Alyssa, this thing has double pane glass really yeah oh. what the heck um we're just going to drive it for the first time because I always like to film my first driving experiences. Here are the keys, by the way. Um, but we're going to do like, we got to get blue and everything. The event just ended. We're kind of discombobulated at the moment. But I wanted to film my very first time driving an EDV. So um, I wonder how to adjust the steering wheel. Uh, underneath the manual. Oh, it's not powered. I don't know why I'm surprised in a van. I'm just used to the Rivian stuff. So that's cool. And it really comes out quite far. So we're getting a quick phone call, but it's my mother. It's your mother. <laughs> wow. Just put it in drive. This door closed. Yeah. When you park it, it's, it goes open. So I just need to adjust the mirrors slightly. So I do that here and then, sorry, mom. Uh, we're going to come down this way. We're going to come out this way. Got bikers all around us, but I got a pretty good view done. And here we go, driving the EDV for the first time. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is amazing. See you to our Rivian friends over there. This view is just incredible. Why do of, people drive Model Xs? I don't this even is a have view. to move the camera. It's just straight beauty. Oh, it is so cool. So I've driven the bright drop before. And this is an entirely different experience than the Bright Drop. You really feel like you're in, it's so dead silent with the Enduro drive unit, Alyssa. Wow. 
I feel like I'm on a monorail train of some kind. Doesn't it feel like an airport train? Yeah, it's got that same ambient sound of just... Yeah. Hear it just a little bit there? Well, we have to launch it. Yeah. It's a race van. So, there's someone crossing. Nothing to see here. He's checking out. See, everyone looks at this thing. Ready for launch? Yep. Spinning the tires. Oh, this thing buggies! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I gotta get one of these. <laughs> this is so cool. I wonder if they're all that quick, because this is just front wheel drive. I don't know if they'll do an all wheel drive version. I thought they were going to. Um, holy smokes, horn, same horn, that weird deep horn that the Rivian R1s have. Oh my goodness gracious. The turn signal is huge on the software. No one's in our blind spot. This is, wow, we're driving a Rivian EDV or RSV or commercial van. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> this is incredible. Okay, we're gonna turn left here. And we have it for the night. We gotta charge this thing. I wanna see the efficiency on the highway. <laughs> wow! It's quick! It'll get your packages to you prompt. Yeah, well now I know why Amazon delivers so quickly. It's because they're using these things. Yeah. <laughs> so the question from my side is rear view mirror. There really isn't a good one. Wow, the steering is light and easy. There's also a heated steering wheel. Try that out a little bit. Oh yeah, beautiful view everywhere. The only thing I can't see out of is the back, but I know I can pull up the cameras if I want to here, and then I can see the rear. Ooh, yeah. Brake blending on that? Well, it's aggressive brake blending. When you come to zero, it stops you, even a little bit quicker than the R1s do. So let's just test turning radius since there's no one around. Oh, wow. This thing could use some rear steer though. Oh yeah. It's a long boy. And this is the short one. Oh really? This is the 500, not the 700. Yeah. You know, and it feels, I've, I've driven bright drop. I've driven sprinters, of course. Uh, I own a sprinter. I've driven a lot of vans, transits. I'm trying to think what really competes with this. This is bigger than a lot of those things. But uh, yeah, you'll hear some things rattling around. There is a lot of equipment in the back of this as well, but um, I have to say it feels really tight. At least here in the cabin, there is no noise whatsoever. Look at this thing. Just whip it around. Yeah. EDV lifestyle. RSV. I don't know what to call it. I still don't know. But Rivian van. Rivian van lifestyle. <laughs> I don't think I've been more excited to drive a vehicle <laughs> in recent memory. And I've driven some cool stuff. Look at everyone smiling in the van, in the car over here. They're all like, what are you doing? We're driving a van and I'm flooring it. <laughs> does have quite a bit of torque steer though. It does. <laughs> yeah. So you don't want to, you want to be careful. You want to make sure you're straight when you mat it. Wow. I'm just surprised they made it this spicy. This is cool. All right. Well, that's a good first drive. You have to like pull this to recenter the wheel. It doesn't like auto recenter as easily as you would think. Make sure no trains are coming. All right, let's go get the dog. The dog. The dog. Spinning tires in the EDV. I don't even have words. This is like the best day ever. Oh, look at this Chevelle SS right here. Watch and learn, buddy. EDV lifestyle. He's got the cowl induction system. Wow. Let's just creep up. Oh, chopped. Absolutely chopped. <laughs> it's the best. It's got the worst sounding reversing thing. Well, we are merging onto the highway for the first time. So let's go for it. Big power. Wow, it's quick. 
and it pulls harder the faster you go. 60 miles an hour, 65, it's really windy today. 70, this is the maximum speed. 71 indicated. Now, I, we have a huge crosswind right now, which is probably why it's so extremely windy. But it's still pretty loud in here, but most vans are. So, you know, cruising at 70 miles an hour, I have to reduce speed to use adaptive cruise control. Let's try that. Uh, 69, so I can set it to 70. And then I have, uh, I guess, distance adjustment. Maybe if I come here and put everything in night mode, it'll make this display. Oh yeah, no, I've got three distance adjustments rather than four in the normal R1T. And I can set it at 70 miles an hour and we're just cruising. We do a range test. Oh, well guys, you joined me cruising on the highway in the EDV. We put some miles down now and this thing is so nice. It cruises. It's awesome. Uh, of course, it's a very tall vehicle, so it's very affected by wind, but I can really tell there's a lot of weight down low because I don't get this motion with wind, I get this motion. So it's pushing the whole vehicle over rather than giving me a very top heavy vibe. And you know, I'm just sitting here at wide open throttle, cruising at 70 miles an hour. Feels good. I mean, it really is, is nice. I can see just about everything. I pulled up the cameras here so I can see everything around the vehicle, especially with the rear view. You know, it's certainly no S-Class on a long road trip, but it does the job. Interestingly, there's no lane centering in this vehicle. It just has adaptive cruise control. So, level 72 miles an hour, top speed on the downhill. <laughs> yeah, really, uh, really good at cruising. Oh yeah, we have two working stalls at this EA station. And uh, that's, that's not so fast charging at the moment. <laughs> okay, but at least we are charging, so see what the van says well folks we're just before we get through the rest of the video i swung by the electrify america station just to test out some charging make sure it did charge and always good to check you know this is a brand new van and i don't know i've never really used it before and i went to go put the heat on in the cabin and you can't use the heat but you can use the cooling oh wait nope heating unavailable while charging so very weird we're only doing 37 kilowatts on a 350 kilowatt station, but again, it could be a station limitation. So let's just take a look, pull up ride. Let's see what it says here for charging. Um, maximum available current. Yeah, so the charger says it can do more. So it's van limited, but the battery maximum temperature is very cold. So we're gonna have to heat this thing up and there's no nav to do preconditioning because this one's not equipped with the nav system so uh yeah anyway that's uh we gotta rip the crap out of this thing warm it up I guess so. so what's happening now is it's surging from 40 slowly down to 20 and then back up but you can feel the vehicle move right yeah it keeps jolting when it makes big changes yeah, and every time it jolts i hear a fan kick on mm -hmm. underneath the vehicle somewhere and so i wonder if it's just like the motors are now connected in some kind, maybe doing some heating from the motor. I don't know, but it's definitely like jolting. You can see we're down to 28 kilowatts at 70%, but it might come right back up again. I'm not really sure. Either way, we're just going to keep charging until it gets pretty warm, maybe at least up to 80, 81%. I want to see if this thing charges past 80%. And now you can see it's surging back up. Definitely feels like very early charge curve days. Now at 41 kilowatts, fan is off. So very, very weird performance. But the battery's not that warm on the hottest cell, at least. So we're good to go. One thing I'll mention is that this dog right here loves this expansive view. He's been right here the whole time watching traffic, seeing what's going on. And uh, he's currently got his, yeah, you got your listening ears on when your ears are pinned back like that. But it's just such a good view. We're drag racing this truck on the floor. Oh, we're taking him. We're taking him. <laughs> I just saw his rev counter in the red. He was wide open because that thing shifted that red line. EDV lifestyle. And uh, that's my uh, little snippet. 
Guys, I just want to mention we're on smoother pavement and the wind has died down a little bit. So here at 50 miles an hour, it's pretty dead quiet. Let's see at what point it starts getting really loud. At 60, I can hear that wind, that door being pretty loud. Oh, are we turning here, Alyssa? Yeah. Okay. So we have to try. So 50 miles an hour, you're pretty much dead silent. 60 miles an hour, you start to hear that passenger door make a little bit of wind noise, but no annoying whistle or anything like that. Thing seems to give you full power, like 40, 50 miles an hour, 48 miles an hour, you're wide open 300 horsepower. There's 70. So yeah, that door is it, but it, for sure this is way quieter than when we were on the highway earlier. So yeah, pretty good. Well guys, it's now later in the evening. It's about 9.30 p.m. and I've really just tried to figure out this van and soak it in and get to know it. I've done charging tests. Uh, just to make sure we were achieving the vehicle's maximum, not only at the EA station, because I thought, okay, that weird 30, 40 kilowatt thing seemed low. So I actually went to the Rivian factory and they have a Rivian Adventure Network charger in the back at end of line when the vehicles come out. So I plugged this in there and it was doing the same power at that same state of charge in the same temperature range. So at least I know when I do the charging test in a bit, that's representative of what this will do. I should say, um, I, I don't know if this is final production. This is just a Rivian vehicle that's like a part of their internal fleet. So, you know, I'm gonna definitely see if there if there's updates, I'm gonna film a charging update for you, but I'll at least show you how this one charges, which I haven't seen above 44 kilowatts yet, but we've been pretty high, so we're gonna drain it. Uh, and I'm gonna go on the highway and do a 70 mile per hour rough range test. We're not gonna run it to zero or do anything uh, crazy. And of course it's fairly windy outside. But I thought just since I've been soaking in the vehicle, I've learned a little bit about it, some intricacies, and I want to tell you a bit more about it now that I've spent some time. So one thing that isn't a problem if you're by yourself is this auto door closing. But every time that I put it in drive, let me just show you here really quick. Foot on the brake, into drive, watch this. The door automatically closes. And uh, it's so funny because Blue is always running back and forth and I've been slamming the door into him. And it, it does uh, retract with a little bit of resistance. So it doesn't really seem to bother him too much. He's not like screaming, but it's, it's not really something I'm looking out for every time I put a vehicle in drive. The other thing is when I put the vehicle in park, it does not put the parking brake on. It's actually holding it on the brake booster. And then after about one to two minutes, it then clamps down on the electric parking brake. Now I imagine this is so after delivery, after delivery, after delivery, you're not constantly clamping on the rear parking brake because keep in mind, this vehicle doesn't have a traditional parking pawl, uh, like a park lock in the drive unit. It uses the electronic parking brake in the rear to stop the vehicle. And I think just to save wear and tear and cycle life on the parking brake, which I guess is yeah, parking brakes on the rear axle, but it's front wheel drive. Um, my guess is that, um, you know, right now we're just sitting on the brake booster and eventually you'll hear as it clamps down on the rear brakes. Kind of funny, kind of cool. And when you lock it, it does that as well. Um, and some other interesting things are when you go around a corner too quickly, it pops up with a message that says, uh, turning vehicle too fast, go slower or something like that. And I'm like, that is hilarious. And you do feel like you're going to fall out of the seat if you turn around a left-hand turn because you get pushed this way. Another thing is this seat is heated and cooled, but not in a traditional way. It actually, I think, just has an HVAC vent like this piped under the seat. And it shows like this here. If you hit this, you'll, you'll hear a fan kick on. And I think it just pumps out whatever air is coming out here. Cause it's not like you can choose heated or cooled seat. It's tied with your temperature adjustment here on the screen, which I guess is okay. But especially in the winter time or the summertime, I, I like to have a heated seat even with cold air. So I'm, I don't know, kind of interesting. And then this heat button actually controls this as a heating element. And so Alyssa was saying this seat gets pretty dang warm. Uh, but she did say after a while it got fairly uncomfortable and she's just rolled up in our Tesla over here. We just picked it up from the parking garage where we left it. Um, this for sure is a driver monitoring camera. You can see the uh, infrared lights in there. So I'm not sure if it's being used uh, by Amazon or by another company, not sure. I'm also guessing some of this would be features not enabled on here, perhaps to do with navigation, uh, which isn't seemingly working on this particular example. So those are just a few intricacies that I've found with the vehicle so far. Um, 
Interestingly, it won't show me efficiency anywhere or any like charging. There's no nerd data on here. There's also no way to like adjust your sound system uh, levels. You know, overall it feels great. One of my favorite features is just having this big hazard button and you can see how bright those turn signals are, especially at nighttime. And I also love the emergency hazards or you can see they start doing a disco light. So I think that's a really, really cool feature. It's also task light. I think that's in the rear. Um, yeah, just, I've already shown you a lot of this stuff, but just driving this, it feels so normal now. You just have passing power. You have, you know, a beautiful view of the road, way more than any other van that I've been in. It feels so high quality. It feels like it's built really well. I mean, so well. And, it's one of those things that just not only makes you happy to look at because it is a very pleasant vehicle to look at, it makes you happy to drive because you're like, a van shouldn't accelerate this hard from 40 miles an hour silently. And you know, some of you may ask, are they gonna make an all-wheel drive version? The answer is maybe yes, they will. However, um, interesting, there's a little first aid kit down here and that has a little cover. Cool, and a cup holder. Um, keep in mind though, they need this floor to be flat. So I think if you were to do an all-wheel drive, you would have a hump or a higher floor would be my guess, unless you do some sort of portal axles or um, maybe not coaxially mounted drive unit, perhaps. I'm not totally sure how that would work, but that is why this is front-wheel drive and not rear-wheel drive and why a lot of vans don't have a rear drive option. And it's mostly for low floor height, so you can retain as much of this inside. So I think I've covered a few things on here. Nice little magazine holder. I don't know. Uh, if I think of anything else, I'll certainly let you know. But let's do some nerd stuff. Let's do um, a range test, 70 miles an hour. It shouldn't take too long. Let's do a charging test afterwards. And then I think we'll call it a video. But I really just want to cram as much as possible into this video. Uh, because, yeah, when else are we going to have the opportunity to drive a van like this and do all this fun stuff and... Again, it's not really a consumer product, so let's just put it all in one video and have some. Guys, a few more comments on the interior as well, just to mention, we have some power ports down here. So we have, yeah, just some mics charging, but we have USB-C and USB-A right down here, which is great. So two ports, again, the two wireless charging pads, a pretty flexible, flimsy terminology, not sure what to say there, uh, right there for your storage. I'm noticing perhaps a VIN plate here. Let's take a look. Yep, so you have your stamped VIN behind there would be my guess. Oh yeah, it says, uh, of course, it says VIN right on there. Heard that from someone. Uh, there's also, of course, uh, no front trunk that opens or no hood under there. So a lot of your service panels are underneath the driver's seat. You can see here your a 12 volt connection, low voltage fuses, um, Again, cup holders, two cup holders actually, interesting, and storage, 120 volt outlets in the service version, but that's all customizable. There's also an emergency release for the door here. I'm just going to try that. Yeah, so that works. It pulls the manual latch on this side. I'm just going to pop over here on this side and show you guys some of the uh, weight ratings and everything. So we can look at all of the door card information. And if I come over here, you can see it's Made by Rivian Automotive, 2023 model year. So this one was built probably last year. And uh, ZEV, MDV, there you go, the, the EPA class, all that good stuff. If I come down here, you'll notice disconnect high voltage information, how that all works. You have your tire pressures, no spare tire. Again, every room needs to go inside. You have a payload of 2,658 pounds on this one, which I think is less than it actually said on the spec sheet, but that could be because it's upfitted with some service equipment already, and that's accounted for. But 70 PSI on the 245-70-17s. And if we come down here, you'll see it was built oh, early 2023, three of 23, but that means it is a current drive unit and current battery because they started in January. So this thing sat around for a whole year before we got a video for it. So this was probably just their display model shown at events, shown at the factory. <laughs> so this thing sat for a whole year and then we got a hold of it 
and it has no, <laughs> it's not getting the crap kicked out of it because we're testing it. So yeah, just juicing it up to 100 right now. We'll do a full charging diagnostic or a charging log at the end of this video, but it kind of sits at 22 kilowatts, which is like high AC charging speed for Europe. And keep in mind, this vehicle is for sale in the US and Europe. And I think there's even a right-hand drive version coming and it just sits at high 22 kilowatts, which is what, you know, an AC charger maximum will do three phase. And I bet it'll just hold that all the way to 100%. I see a lot of prototypes and a lot of early builds on DC charging after they get to about 80%, just sit at 22 kilowatts, but I'll log the whole charging curve after this. Pretty cool, pretty interesting. Let's uh, let it complete at 100% and then hit the road for the range test. Okay guys, we have completed at uh, indicated 99%. We put in 30 kilowatt hours to go from 70 to 100, which does indicate very close to 100 kilowatt hours, doesn't it? So what I'm gonna do is click the release button, pull this out. I guess you don't even need to click the release button. Maybe that's just for the Euro stuff, having that in there, I'm not sure. We'll leave the Model S there. And uh, actually I can hear a power consumer running. The rear fan is turned on in here. It's very loud and <laughs> pretty crazy. So let's, all right, there we are, 445 volts. 450 volts pretty much full, not under charging. Let's turn cargo fan off. Weirdly, it was not working earlier while I was charging, so maybe it doesn't let you do cargo fan while charging either. I'm not sure. Okay, um, great. Well, we're at 100% state of charge. The vehicle's indicating 147 miles of range, but the one thing with EDV is this range estimate does seem to be more predicted based off of your driving history than anything else. I'm also noticing there's no um, trip computer in here, so we won't really get efficiency or anything like that, but we're gonna basically use the odometer here. We're at 99 miles. Nearest makes no difference, 100. We'll just take one off whatever we get above 100. So the highway's not far. Let's jump on, set it at max speed, and do kind of a worst case scenario range test. All right, here we go, foot on the brake, vehicle's on, SOS isn't working at the moment, but that's probably because this is not a punch sold vehicle, so it's not connected. Um, we have the cargo fan off, dome lights, we don't need any more. I think they automatically shut off anyway. Headlights are awesome. Let's put it in reverse, door closes, big backup camera. You can see this is like very similar to Amazon van style here. The turning radius rocks. I can just turn this thing a bunch. And you can see, woof, we come right out of there. No problems at all. Let's head out this way. Again, 100%, 147 miles. My guess is we're going to get about 100 miles. I think on the highway, in the city, you'll probably get 200, 250 miles even with the big battery. I'm not sure. It does a lot of brake blending, which doesn't help with efficiency. And uh, yeah, there's two Amazon ones. EDV is right there. Love to see it. So yeah, let's head out here, jump on the highway, get it up to 70 as soon as possible and rock and roll. And we are just about to merge onto the highway and then we're gonna head towards Indianapolis is my understanding. Beautiful view out the front, absolutely gorgeous. It's 11 p.m. but again, 10 p.m. my time, mountain time. So we're feeling good, feeling great. Let's get it up to 70 miles an hour, gentle accelerations, using that front wheel drive to claw us up to speed. You can see here the mirrors are not auto dimming at night, although maybe they should be. Lane change here, 68, 69, 70, great, 71. Usually in Rivian vehicles, I have to go one over. And we are, yeah, it lets you only set adaptive cruise to 70 maximum, like we learned earlier. So let's do that there, 69, and then I can bump it up to 70. Nice. Well, we're cruising, folks. Well, guys, we're in the van and I am pegged. I have my foot to the floor because I get the extra one mile per hour that cruise control won't give me. And that gets me up to 70 mile per hour constant with an indicated 71. Uh, I'm not going to run heated steering wheel like I mentioned, only because I remembered we got to stick to the rules. So we're running cabin climate on one heater on automatic, which is still pretty low fan. And we're just cruising. It's great. Now, a lot of you might ask, why are we doing a highway route with a delivery van that's meant for inner city deliveries? Well, we run every vehicle, regardless of type, at 70 miles an hour, so we have an equal playing field. But it's important to remember that while this test is going to show relatively low mileage, 
just wait until we do a city test one day because this vehicle is very much affected by aerodynamics and its size and height and uh, at low speed I bet this thing will drive all day without needing to be charged. I've heard as Amazon drivers not needing to charge, uh, getting to about 50% after a full daily shift. So I would say the range, no one's been complaining about the range of this. I already know the number is not going to be huge right now, but we have to run it at 70 miles an hour because that's what we do every vehicle. And it'd be a shame if we didn't get this one logged. So let's go run it. Well, guys, we are cruising. I'm trying out the sound system and it's like, just like, Sounds like it's one speaker up there. It might be a couple, but man, you would think like even those little mobile sound bars sound better than this thing. What a honestly pretty terrible sound system. But I, I, I would be fine with it if it was at least loud enough to hear over some of the wind noise, which we are driving into a major headwind. I read the wind maps wrong earlier. It's actually working out great because we have a direct headwind now. We'll have a direct tailwind before. Uh, on the way back, I should say. So that'll be fine. Anyway, 75% state of charge right now. Things are going well. We have now driven 22 miles, right? We have to add one, essentially. We've driven 22 miles now, and that's with a major headwind. So that would indicate uh, close to a 90 mile range on a full charge. My guess is it'll do 100 on the highway. That's my gut feeling roughly one mile per kilowatt hour at 70 miles per hour with a vehicle that's as tall as this. That seems reasonable. We have climate control running. It's fairly chilly out. This doesn't have a heat pump or anything like that. So yeah, anyway, I'm just gonna keep it pinned, keep cruising now at 71. Even with the headwind, I have to say the wind is not knocking us around as much as you would expect, but with a headwind, it's pretty stable. I bet our efficiency will massively increase on the return. Uh, I wish we got an efficiency graph like my R1 has, would be really great. And I think it'd be a good learning tool for drivers to help them drive more efficiently. But uh, yeah, if you're not even getting close to the usable range of your battery pack on a daily drive, then no problem at all. You can see we're nice and wide passing another truck, but no issues, very stable, totally enjoying this experience. Let's keep rocking. I'm not sure how sparse the exits get out here. So I'm actually going to pull off here and I can feel the brake pedal getting pulled in. So it's definitely doing some regen blending right about there when it gets almost to the end of the regen line, but still decelerates harder when I lift off the accelerator pedal with some brake blending. Uh, I figure I'm just going to loop around now. Let's see if the tailwind helps us. We've done 36, 37 miles since we left and uh, we're down to 60% state of charge. So yeah, my, my guess is we're gonna be much more efficient on the return, but let's find out. It's nice and empty roads. I'm able just to sit wide open at 100% throttle, pegged at 70 miles per hour GPS. Um, really fun time, gotta say. Uh, I, I just love driving this van. The view is incredible. You can see everything. You have these cool A-pillar windows. Uh, nothing makes me happier than an electric van. I know it's weird, but like, this is so much fun. It's so cool. We're so lucky to be able to test this thing early on. And I and I feel bad that I'm putting this range test in the video because I feel like a lot of people are going to get the wrong impression and be like, oh, the Rivian man only does 100 miles on a charge, blah, blah, blah. But it's like they're not meant for highway cruising. Also, another case why maybe these things aren't quite ready for RVs and adventure yet. But then again, if you do charge a lot, at least you would have your house with you attached to the back. And who cares how long it takes to charge at that point? Anyway, gentle accelerations back up to 70. It dings when you hit the line. As you can see, I was cutting the apex full racing line here. Let's uh, get it back up to 70 and I'll see you uh, on the return. Hello from 50% state of charge. We've now been heading in the opposite direction and things are getting much better from an efficiency standpoint. You can see we're up to 150 miles now, which means we've traveled 51 miles and we've used 51%. Uh, so we're very much on track for a 100 mile range and we still have more tailwind. The vehicle's also gotten quieter and it just shows you that wind is always a huge consumer or a huge benefit. And that's why we are running a loop style test to counteract the, benef the benefit and the downside of the wind as much as possible. 25% check-in, 180 miles driven, looking good. We have reached 10% state of charge and we are on the return, which means the tailwind is helping. Um, I looped around a one more time actually, so that didn't quite make it to camera, but we've driven a hundred miles. We're at 199. 
and we're still cruising on the highway. We have 9% remaining. Now, we do have like 13 miles projected range and like 11 or 12 to get to the charger. So fingers crossed we actually make it, but uh, I want this test to be as accurate as possible. And so far the results are looking good and the test is doing well. 71, we're still cruising. Again, I expected worse actually. I know this may not seem great to a lot of you because it's such an inefficient tall vehicle, but for a roughly 90, 95 kilowatt hour usable pack, we're getting over 100 miles out of a van at highway speeds in relatively cold temperatures, very low 40 degree range. So I don't know. I wouldn't say it's most impressive. I think eSprinter is going to go farther for sure, but it's not bad. It's totally livable. You can take a highway to a local exit, run local errands and come back. And in my case, I can drive it to Denver and back, which is what I care about. So um, yeah, pretty cool. We're going to keep keep rolling over to the charger quick headlight check for you guys there's some high beams low beams it does have automatic high beams but you can turn those off uh, I would say very very good light throw and the high beams don't make too much of a difference but the low beams are awesome we are down to five percent state of charge and I can definitely tell that this is an LFP battery pack because we still have no indicated power limit still just doesn't care ready to give us full power even down this low our first warning, battery almost empty, performance reduced to conserve energy just popped up, but I see no sign of reduced performance at the moment. So all is still good. We are still cruising at top speed, 3% state of charge. Uh, that was the first warning that a driver would get, which is at roughly four miles of range, 3% state of charge. We are just about to come off 70 miles per hour, still no power limit, but we have reached our exit and I don't think we can make it any farther we are at two percent state of charge and we have traveled let's think about this 110 miles on the nose it's indicating 209 miles on the odometer blending the oh full regen now still blending brakes even at two percent state of charge and we are blend, blending in some friction brakes there so uh, what we're going to do is run it all the way out on these frontage roads to 0% indicated and then charge it up to full and see how that does. Since it doesn't matter too much, I figured we would just do a quick acceleration run. <laughs> okay, I'm just, just hitting the throttle really quick. I don't like to do it down low, but LFP lifestyle, this thing makes full power all the way down to 1% state of charge. No power limit. This thing still rips just as hard as you would expect. Let's go get to the fast charger. Well, folks, we finished the range test, just pulled into the charger. We drove 113 miles because we started at 99. So, hey, better than I expected, actually. Let's take a look at the pack voltage down low on this LFP pack. I never saw a power limit. It pulled super hard. Not that I was ripping on it down low a bunch, but very, very cool. And you can see it's 402 volts completely dead. That is so impressive, and it's 450 full. That is a very LFP style pack. If I come here to BMS, it should tell us, yes, yeah, 7.5% pack absolute. My guess is there's probably a pretty big buffer. I, I bet you could do maybe not 120 miles on a charge because I don't know how much of this absolute is usable. They usually shut off before they hit zero, zero, I think. Or they just put a big buffer in these. Essentially, when we get this to Colorado, we can run it to dead, but with LFP, you have no idea when it's about to die, and I'm not here to push a Rivian van in the middle of the night in normal. This was a really good, rough impression of range. We do have to get it to Colorado one day, I'm sure we will, and run it till it dies. So yeah, let's charge it now from 0% indicated to 100 and see what happens. You know, of course, in order for us to do a proper test on a vehicle, we need to charge it from 0 to 100% and log the curve. And here we are, plugging in at 0%, shoots at 50 kilowatts, and just kind of sits there. Now, in the official documentation from Rivian, it actually says vehicle is a 50 kilowatt rated charging speed, which we're seeing, but then capable up to 100 kilowatts. Now, I'm not sure if that means at some point in the future or currently, if it's an optional extra, I asked Rivian to clarify. When I hear back, I'll certainly let you guys know in an upcoming podcast, perhaps. 
Anyway, uh, this is how it charges. Very flat charging curve. Again, if I was reviewing this as a consumer vehicle, I would go, no way. We can't just have a giant bolt clogging chargers on the streets. However, pretty much everyone that's going to be buying this will be doing probably AC overnight charging using the 48 amp onboard charger. And if they do need to DC, well, it's two hours and six minutes, zero to full completely. And I think that's okay. But again, another case against the RV conversion, at least with the current battery pack that's installed in the vehicle. Either way, this is how the LFP 100 kilowatt hour charges and it seems like it's probably about 90 to 95 kilowatt hour usable based off of us delivering 98 kilowatt hours in the end by the way wiper check here we go and let's put them to the highest performance into storm mode man they're boogieing <laughs> that's hilarious okay and they only come to right there but that's plenty for you to see out We'll return them back to auto and they go into their locked position. You know, this is just one of the coolest vehicles I've ever driven. <laughs> I love this thing so much. And I really don't know if I have a total explanation as to why I love it so much, but I just, it's so cool. That's all it is. I am noticing <laughs> spinning tires, just still spinning. I can hear it struggling in the wet being front wheel drive. Man, you're spinning tires. Look at this. A convoy of Rivians up ahead. If this would focus, I would be able to show you, but it won't. Anyway, there's like 30, I don't know how many, but a bunch of Rivians up ahead right there. Yeah, can't see it. So this must be how they transit them around. No license plates, just like us. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Well, we're following behind in the Rivian commercial van, full send through the corner. Oh, it's beeping at me. It says, slow down while turning. Where's the racing spirit? <laughs> Actually handles pretty well, but you do get some torque steer when you floor it mid corner. But uh, yeah, I mean, who cares? It's, it's so much better than any other van I've driven with the weight nice and low. I can tell we're getting a huge side wind from the right. Yeah, according to this flag, we definitely are. And uh, I really have to put in quite a bit of lock on the wheel to hold it steady. So yeah, I'm, I'm putting a lot of pressure to the right because we're getting blown by the wind here, which is fairly usual for large vehicles. This one's doing like very low speeds here. Where are you going, buddy? He's in like max, oh, he was stuck in max suspension height. <laughs> he was full high, which limits you to 20 miles an hour. That is actually pretty funny. Let's go take a look at all these um, Rivians over here. How sick is this? Just a line of them right in front of the factory. So cool. And here we are pulling into the factory. I believe this area, I've been and done some factory tours a few times now since the early days into the modern buildings. This building on the right is new. And I think this is where they do the Enduro drive unit and potentially the cell to pack manufacturing. I, I shouldn't say that because it's not a cell to pack architecture. It's just where they assemble the cells into modules, which then get put into packs. I believe the LFP battery in this van actually comes from China and is shipped as a full module from China before installing uh, here in the factory. So I don't think they do any LFP module stuff here. They just install the pack from, is it CATL? I'm not sure, could be. Um, so now here we are at the factory pulling in, beautiful views. You can see the Rivian windmill, definitely getting full energy today. The factory is actually during a shutdown period as they make way for the Rivian R1 refresh models, which should have interesting content changes and cost savings. Beautiful Rivians right there at the front with the windmills in the back, running lights on. Last night we were here, we actually saw a goose just standing right here, staring at the two Rivian vehicles. Like, I don't know, <laughs> he was like mesmerized by them. He just wouldn't stop staring. I was wondering if he'd still be here today, but no, I wonder if the parking lights were interesting to him so very cool i'm going to have to return this thing now but i'll give you my final thoughts first well there you guys go the rivian electric commercial van um and this one being configured for the rivian service van this has been one hell of a cool experience i'm sitting right in front of the rivian factory behind me 
in one of the coolest vehicles I've ever had the chance to review. They're not cheap, nor are really any vans. Think about Sprinter prices, they've gotten expensive. Rams are really the, the cheapest ones, in my impression, then Transit, then Sprinter, and then this. Uh, E-Sprinter is not gonna be cheap either, but I think that might have more range. We definitely have to test a little bit more in the van style, but in a vacuum, if I was a, a fleet logistics company or you know needed to buy a couple hundred of these or even a couple thousand, this is the one I would go for. It seems to be the most driver-centric of any van I've ever been in. In terms of the motions for getting in and out of the seat, the heated steering wheel, the very clear displays, the unbelievable vantage point out front, the, of course, acceleration and just drivability of an electric vehicle is second to none, uh, especially in a category like this. I'd love to drive one fully loaded to see how that feels, but to me, this is the clear choice. It's got the happiest image. It makes the streets a better place. There's just no way around it. When you see this coming down your neighborhood, you go, wow, how cool is that? It's a Rivian van. And then you see a Ram come into your neighborhood and you're like, ah, oh, the Amazon guys are clogging up the street. It is true. I hate to say it, but it's true. This is just so cool. It brings so much happiness to people because of the design, let alone how nice it is to drive and the features and how high quality everything feels. The fit and finish is really, uh, to me, something very special as well. It has incredibly high um, build quality in terms of no rattles, no squeaks, no anything like that up here in the cab. You do hear some stuff in the back rattling around, but it's also got a bunch of stuff installed and loose metal bits everywhere. And I bet if this was an open shell, it'd be pretty damn quiet, which is unusual for a van. So the noise performance is great. Uh, and I think the negatives for me are, I'm a fan of small batteries in fleet vehicles, by the way, I just want to mention, I like that this battery application, this charging speed, this range, everything works perfectly for a delivery type service. You will easily get, in my opinion, over 200 miles around town, which is more than a full days of driving, delivering packages. You might even get close to 300 miles under perfect conditions. I'd love to do that test, uh, do like a package simulation test. I bet you could go two days without charging this thing. On the highway, pegged at max speed, it's really tall. You got to push all that air out of the way. So that certainly doesn't help it very much at all either. Um, but for RV conversions, I know a lot of you guys watching this video will be like, I want to buy one and convert it to an RV. You absolutely can, but I think they need to offer a large pack or a max pack or a bigger battery solution, you know, 95 kilowatt hours, 96 kilowatt hours we put into the charger. So I think it's about 90 usable is maybe you know, what the EPA tests say as well. So that kind of sounds about right. Um, I think that's not enough battery for personal use. For fleet use, absolutely. But for personal use, yeah, I think we need like a max pack situation or something like that. So yeah, I'd love to see 200 kilowatt hours in here for an RV conversion. Of course, I'd love to see all wheel drive, but you'd have to have a hump somehow on the rear axle would be my guess just to accommodate for drive units. Um, and I think the compromise would be worth it for an RV. The question is, how many RVs of these will they be able to sell versus how many fleet vehicles will they be able to sell? And I have no question in my mind that people will convert these into RVs one day. It's going to happen. They pop up for sale used on Copart and all these things. However, um, I'm not sure Rivian will offer it. I hope they do. I know Rivian wants to. Like, I was talking to RJ about it yesterday. He's like, that would be so sick. But like, think about... DHL could come in and buy a bunch of them and then RVs, you got to re-engineer and they're complicated and blah, blah, blah. It takes time, expensive. And so it's just not the volume market, but I hope Rivian decides, let's just do something cool and does some cool outfits with this direct from the factory. I'd love to see, by the way, with a factory warranty rather than going through one of these third party RV upfitters because they're all crap. I mean, I've, I've spent a lot of time with RVs. They're not nice. I mean, unless you get up into the high-end diesel pusher category, everything's just kind of crap and falls apart. I say that as someone who owns a, a Sprinter Winnebago Revel. It just is falling apart. It's broken right now. So <laughs> I hope that uh, Rivian, if they do that, really puts everything together nicely. So I know it's a long video, but it's probably the only video I'll have a chance to make a full review on the Rivian commercial van with you, the 500. I'd love to test the 700 at some point. And I can't thank you enough for watching. Can't thank Rivian enough for letting me have a go in this. Sadly, it's time to return the keys and head back to Colorado. So I'm going to be very sad to give this thing up. It was quite 
maybe the most fun I've ever had reviewing a vehicle because it's just so happy. The charging can suck and I can still love it because again, think about the use case, 50 kilowatts, two hours overnight, two hours during a lunch break or something, that's more than enough for most applications. And if you need more, buy a combustion vehicle. There's so many applications that this fits into that they'll be able to sell as many as they can make. So yeah, props to Rivian on building this. Hope the Amazon collaboration continues and goes well. I see thousands of them here parked at the factory. I hope they're taking delivery. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a good company analyst or anything like that, but there are, a, I just have to mention a bunch of Amazon vans stuffed in the parking lots here. So I'm not sure if they're just waiting for delivery or not getting picked up or what's going on, but hopefully that's all good because I've never seen that many here and I've been here quite a bit. So fingers crossed. Thanks so much for watching. See you in another one again soon. Bye-bye.